Kuka booth. Uh, Kuka is one of the leaders in robotic arms. Here we have a six axis application. And what, I just want to point out a few things that are in this demonstration because I think they're like good, small, simple things that you can do inside of an automation application to get the most out of a robot and also some like engineering techniques to be able to control a process. So one thing you can see right here, this robot is picking up this little cube and it has a pointer on it. Um, you'll also notice that it'll go pick up other cubes and right now it's doing squaring. I want to point that out since we're here. So that was a squaring uh, feature. So basically what the robot did is it dropped it down into that mechanical location so it could dro drop down in what we call a zero position. That zero position then puts the cube in a known location. So if you're picking up a, a product from a, a pallet, sheets, sheets of like sheet metal, um, you can drop it in there, it'll go to a zero position, and then you know where that corner's at. So it gives you the ability to do like bending operations and, and just whatever post-process that you have. Notice it's doing a tool changer by just using a simple gripper, right? So this is really a, uh, I'll say generic gripper, just it could be like solenoid driven gripper, but notice how the robot's able to pick up multiple different types of tools to be able to perform different operations. Now they make automatic tool changers on the market, but a lot of times those are uh, a little bit more than what you need. They're, they cost quite a bit more and it's not necessar necessarily necessary. A lot of times something simple like this can be the only solution that you really need to be able to switch and grab different toolings and, and be able to perform the operation. So this is another application that's utilizing vision. This one here is using 3D vision and it's kind of hard to see from this angle. We'll get some B-roll so that way you can see what the robot's actually doing. But you can see that the robot will change its orientation when picking the product. And that's a key indicator that's 3D vision because 2D vision cannot uh, do an orientation uh, pick natively. It has to be special, specially programmed in there to be able to uh, perform that functionality, which has to be done by a controls engineer, whereas like a system like this, the path data is generally fed to the robot. Now this still could be given a singular position data, so it's just giving, instead of just an XYZ, which is a flat plane, it's probably giving the WPR, which gives you your yaw pitch roll. Um, 
but I'm not positive this is exactly a bin picking system. We'll go see, we'll find out if it is a bin picking system or not, but it is 3D vision. And, and one of the major differences between 3D vision, standard 3D vision and bin picking is bin picking will give you the paths. It'll feed you the path. And also a lot of times it'll help make some AI type decisions where it's intelligently choosing what product to pick over another. Whereas a lot of times 3D vision may not necessarily natively uh, identify what is the proper product to pick. You might have to write that into your control software and your control engineer might have to manually write that coding uh, to make the decision on what product to pick first. You're fine. <laughs> All right, so I just want to show you guys a, a vision location application uh, running in real time. So one thing you can see over here on this, this screen is the actual vision feedback. So this is using Epson's vision here, RC Plus. So it uh, has two different vision cameras performing two different inspections. Uh, you can see where it's locating the different uh, parts so that way it can do uh, a calculated pick and, and try to make an analyzed decision on what uh, products are the best product to do the pick on. Um, and it's also feeding that data to the robot for a, a pick location. Now I'm not positive if this, if this gives any type of pathing or it's just one singular position and the robot has to handle its above positions and whatnot. Uh, a lot of the like bin picking type of softwares now give uh, entire paths to the robot so it, it tells the arm exactly how it needs to orient when picking up the part. This is 2D vision so I, I highly doubt that it, it's giving any type of pathing data. Uh, 2D vision means you're just taking a picture of one dimension and you're not trying to capture a three-dimensional uh, item where there might be a, what's called a yaw picture roll where the robot has to pose its arm in, in uh, a special orientation. Uh, now you can have the robot pose in a special orientation with 2D vision but then you have to know the, your, your part has to have specific features to it to be able to identify, to then identify where the uh, angularity would be at in the part so that way the robot can make that same accommodation. So basically this vision data is just being passed to the robot. Being this is Epson, uh, it's probably being passed directly from the camera to the robot. A lot of times vision systems, especially in non-high speed applications, we will link them with, uh, through the PLC. So the vision system will talk to a PLC, which will then talk to a robot. And that just gives the ability for uh, people who know controls and PLC programming to support and, and troubleshoot the system. There you go. Thank <laughs> you. 
Ruben. Today. It was good. It was good, wasn't it? We gotta... Oh, this thing better. Yeah. yeah. Um. <laughs> be here. Come on, get with me. Come on. Slide over. We got a lot of B-roll. Yeah, um, Jenna got the most. I got all of yeah. it. I got all of it. Yeah. No, it was a good day. We got to see a lot more of the show. Talk to a lot more people. Yep. And yeah. Yeah. Yeah, one thing about this show that uh, that I've kind of been doing, you know, outside of just like being, having to be in like other company meetings and stuff occasionally, um, is just actually looking at technologies uh, that we may utilize in our company, right? Or not necessarily new technologies per se, but uh, maybe new vendors. So we're looking and exploring using like different vendors, different robotics companies. Um, you know, because we use a lot of, you know, Fanuc and Yoskawa and things like that and um, really just want to diversify, need to diversify and uh, making sure like the technologies really align with like our values as a company. You know, like we have to have like remote accessibility to be able to remote troubleshoot applications. Um, we need to be able to have like either an IP uh, communication protocols or or some equivalent to that. Uh, we need to have like safety over Ethernet. That's a big one for, for us as well. Um, and not necessarily just safety over Ethernet, but just any type of like safety communication where we don't have to do the safety controls uh, hardwire connection where we can make that, that connection a wired, con or we, we're not making it a wired connection. Like pretty much all of our systems get deployed with 100% uh, Ethernet communication protocol or some equivalency to that. And there's like zero wiring in our systems. There are communication protocol and then power supply for the products. And that's how pretty much everything is, is done within our systems. So we're here exploring those things as well. Uh, Jenna ran around getting a lot of content while I was doing that. Yeah. yeah. You guys will see it. And that's a really great thing to do with these events is like, just exploring the different options that are within in these uh, types of systems. The one downfall is oh, the one downfall is is uh, a lot of times you have sales guys at the booths, and they're like sales guys that if you if you really know what you're looking for, then you'll find out that like they don't really know the product that well, and you're asking a lot of questions that they really can't get the answer to. Or don't don't have the answer to I should say. And they just direct you to other people that are uh, don't have the answer either. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. That's when it's really a problem. When I, they direct you to three different people and they none of them know the answer, and it's something like simple, uh, 
you know, like if it's about user interface or like stuff like the, you know, safety over Ethernet type of things, like those are things that should just be known. That shouldn't be like a, in my opinion, but I mean also too, like, you know, for us as a, a company, we're pushing the boundaries of, wh of what is considered advanced. And when we see a lot of companies come out with like advanced things, like we're like, we're already doing those type of things. Uh, there's even a lot of things that like we don't even market and like really demonstrate to the public, but the things that we just already do and implement into our systems. And you know, we market them as we're selling systems to our customers, but uh, you know, to us, these are things that are just like a must. Like it's not even a, a question of should we add it? It's we, we do add it. Um, but yeah, automation events are a great place to to check these type of things out, check out new technologies and vendors and see what options are out there. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So, this is day two. We got a ton of after party stuff. We might, might not bring the camera, I don't know. Um, it's pretty dead right now. It's pretty dead right now. I mean, we're gonna go back, drop the data off, get, char get charged up and stuff, but, uh, also too, like we're carrying this big old camera around. You may have seen in the beginning of this vlog if they're watching the vlog style of this. Uh, it's it's a pretty big setup. It's like 10, 15 pounds to carry. And- it Sucks. It's just a lot, man. Especially when you do it all day and then it's like, it's a little bit of work. So if you want to come carry our camera next time, reach out and uh, we'll, we'll provide all the traveling expenses. Catch y'all, catch y'all in a bit.